Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you on a brand new Tier 8 Premium British Tank Destroyer, the first at its tier inside the game. It is the Turtle Mark 1. And if, like me, you enjoy vehicles like the Tortoise, or maybe you prefer the Badger at Tier 10, then you'll probably be looking for something to be able to crew train, and also probably make some decent credits for yourself at the same time. Today I'm going to let you know everything there is to know about this super heavy British tank destroyer with monstrous damage per minute. I'm going to let you know whether I think it's worth it, or alternatively, how it stacks up to its American competition, the TS-5, which is going to be the best one if you enjoy that kind of casemate tank destroyer, super heavy, just all-in, frontal, low-flexibility vehicle. I've got some Ace Tanker gameplay coming right up, but firstly, Let's have a good dig into the statistics of this tank. So unfortunately today, I'm not going to be able to use the tank's GG website to assess the statistics of the turtle compared to its competition. And that's because the statistics were actually slightly nerfed for their 1.6.1.2 micro patch yesterday. That's right, Wargaming actually made this tank worse before it was released, effectively I guess from the super test balancing. So with that in mind, I'm going to be using the in-game comparison, which will show the correct statistics but also, these will not be the base values, these will be the effective values that you get with a 100% commander. So I've chosen to compare the Turtle to the standard Tier 8 British tank destroyer, the AT-15, the Tier 9 and the Tier 10 Tortoise and the Badger, and also its Tier 8 Super Heavy Premium competition, the TS-5. These two are going to be battling out and I will be giving you my full opinion about which I think one is superior at the end of this video. So immediately we notice that the Turtle and its 108mm main armament has 330 damage. That's 100 higher than the AT-15, but still 70 lower than the TS-5 and the Tortoise and significantly lower, 150 than the Badger, although that thing is two tiers higher than it. Anyone who's played the standard Tier 8 British tank destroyer, the AT-15, will know that this 230 alpha damage really doesn't feel enough, and you often have to shoot your opponent's tracks multiple times to be able to take them off. The Turtle doesn't really have the 400 alpha that the TS-5 has and that will definitely take your opponent's tracks off. Sometimes I found in the turtle that one is not enough. If you get a low damage roll then the tracks don't come off the enemy tank. But still 330 is going to get them off way more with a single shot than the 230 on the AT-15. And any of you who do play these case mate tank destroyers without turrets will know just how important locking down the tracks of your opponents are to be able to then really go to town on them, hold them in place, stop them from getting your side, and then use your damage per minute. Talking about damage per minute, that's something the turtle is definitely not lacking. It fires 9.2 rounds a minute with this 330 alpha damage. If this was a tier 9 medium tank with 240 alpha damage, that would be a great rate of fire. Consequently, that means that this vehicle with a 100% commander before you put a gun rammer, vents, and you have good crew skills on the tank, has over 3,000 damage per minute. That's higher than the AT-15 and just a little bit higher than the TS-5 as well. However, this still pales in comparison to the true damage per minute lords of the Tortoise and the Badger at 3,526 and 3,534 respectively. Unfortunately, like the AT-15, one of the things that holds this tank back is the penetration. It's 224. This is lower than the AT-15's quite poor 226 for a tier 8 TD. The TS-5 has 248 and when we look at the premium rounds that these vehicles have, the Turtle actually only packs 253, which is abysmal compared to the TS-5's awesome 300 millimeters of heat penetration. This means that you're quite often going to have to load the gold in this tank inside your equal and higher tier games if you want to reliably penetrate your opponents. And even if you do, if you're firing at super heavy tanks, you're going to not have that extra clout in the gun to be able to go through them. This is something that the AT-15 suffers for, but the Tortoise, the Badger, and the TS-5 don't have that issue. One thing that is lovely, however, about the Turtle is how flexible the gun is. And trust me, when you don't have a turret, you want that gun to be as flexible as you possibly can. It's got a nice wide gun arc, the same as the Tortoise, of 20 degrees to the left and 20 degrees to the right. Combine that with 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation, and this makes the TS-5 look completely inflexible. The TS-5 has half the gun depression of the Tortoise, and half 
the traverse speed of the gun to the left and the right. This means that if you lock down the tracks of the TS5, quite often it's not going to be able to get the extra shot into you as you manage to get to the, the side of the vehicle. While the turtle, on the other hand, is probably going to be able to turn its gun that little bit more or stick its gun down over that ridge line to be able to keep engaging you even if it's tracked. And so definitely keep that in mind when you're fighting these things and there's probably going to be a lot of them in the matchmaker, at least for the next week or so. But even if you put a turtle on its back, in this case, at least if you're sitting in front of it, it's definitely going to be very dangerous. So the aiming time on this tank with a 100% commander is 1.82 seconds. That's the worst in this comparison, although that still sounds like great aim time, right? That's 1.73 on the TS-5, giving the American tank destroyer an advantage. And when we look at the accuracy of the turtle, it's 0.35, which is not nearly as good as the AT-15 or the Badger or the Tortoise, but it is significantly better than the TS-5. All right, so now let's move on to the survivability of this vehicle. 1,400 hit points is not exactly amazing for what feels like a super heavy British tank destroyer. The Tortoise gets 2,000 at tier 9 and the Badger gets 2,100. Even the AT-15 has more hit points than this vehicle and the TS-5 has 1,500. And consequently, while this thing can definitely take a hit better than some of your glass cannon tank destroyers, it can be very frustrating when you take a 750 damage shot from a tier 8 or a tier 9 TD and then find that you, you can't take another one. And when you don't have the highest alpha damage or even the highest penetration, it's really about weathering the storm of that initial hit to then be able to use the damage per minute that your British tank destroyer has to be able to gain an advantage against your opponent. Just quite often, I'm finding that the hit points, unlike on the Tortoise, can't quite achieve this. So in addition to these hit points, the Turtle has a rather impressive armor loadout. On the top part of the hull here, it's 254 millimeters thick, although it is rather flat, as we can see from the side here. The lower plate has two distinct parts. One, this kind of mid plate, which is rather flat, that has 128.6 millimeters of armor, and one, the lower, lower plate, that has 152 millimeters of armor. Consequently, if you're shooting at this thing with 224 millimeters of penetration, that means you're practically always going to go through the lower plate, while the mid plate is going to go through about 40% of the time. The upper hull is 152 millimeters thick, but as we can see, it's quite well angled. And so it's actually only going to be penetrated about half the time, while the upper bar of the tank is actually the thickest part. Now this is great if you're a turtle driver engaging equal and lower tier tanks, because if you use the gun depression and you manage to come over your ridge line against your opponents, the upper hull on this tank is absolutely fantastic and you're going to bounce them every single time. Combine this with a rather nice mantlet and yeah, it's happy days for the turtle. The problem is, is that when you have to fight against tanks that have decent penetration, let's choose the Charioteer for an example. And when we compare it now, we can see that, yeah, the, the turtle really isn't ricocheting very much. And even if the tank is using all of its lovely gun depression, they can still shoot you in the top here and still go through a third of the time. Things get even worse when you fight against a, a tier 9 medium tank like the Leopard Prototype, for example, and they're willing to fire their premium rounds for 323 millimeters of pen. Now, even if you are using your gun depression in the turtle, that top bar becomes a 70% chance to be penetrated. It could be rather frustrating indeed. And if you aren't using any of the gun depression that the tank has, yeah, they're going through you pretty much every single time. And this is a big old easy tank to hit. Combine that with side armor, that while it's it's pretty good at 200 millimeters of effective, it's not the best in the world. And the turtle's armor certainly feels like it can work against equal and lower tier tanks, but as soon as tier 9, some tier 8, and all tier 10 tank destroyers dab that 2 key and they load the gold, they're going to be going through you pretty much every time. Also, I should mention that the Turtle does have a cupola on top of the vehicle. Although it is quite small, it's a lot smaller than on the Tortoise, for example. I have managed to hit this quite consistently when I've been engaging Turtles on the enemy team. And if you do try to, for example, side scrape around a corner like this when you're engaging your opponents, they're either just going to shoot this bar here if they've got high penetration, or it's quite easy for them to hit your cupola on top. If you're actually engaging around a corner and you're side scraping out around here, you don't actually have the weak point on top, which means that the tortoise is far better for side scraping around a corner like this than it is side scraping around a corner like that. So keep that in mind if both you're engaging the tank and you're trying to engage your opponents in it. Now let's talk about mobility. The turtle is practically the same weight as the AT-15 and the TS-5. They're all 60 tons. Now this is actually quite frustrating because it means that the turtle can't use a super heavy spool liner. It can only use a heavy spool liner. 
and the difference between a heavy and a super heavy spore liner is very significant in World of Tanks. The super heavy spore liner will protect you from crew damage up to 50% of the time compared to a heavy spore liner which will only do 30%. Combine this also with 30% protection compared to 50% from ramming and explosions. And more importantly, a super heavy spore liner will reduce additional stun duration by 20% compared to 10% for a heavy spore liner. And that means that really the tortoise is still the daddy of being the super heavy damage sponge against high explosive and probably even not even needing to take a med kit in the tortoise because you can use the super heavy. Consequently, that means that when I play my turtle, I'll actually probably prefer to either take two repair kits on this thing and take a med kit, or alternatively, just use a toolbox on the tank to try and enhance the base repair speed of the vehicle, as I really don't think it's worth taking uh, a heavy spore liner on this vehicle. On the other hand, one thing that is nice about the turtle is it gets a rather meaty engine, eight 100 horsepower, pretty much the same as the tortoise, but remember this thing weighs 16 tons less. Consequently, this gives the vehicle a 13.33 power to weight ratio, which is the best in this comparison, apart from against the Badger. So that makes this thing pretty nippy in a straight line, up to its top speed limit of 20 kilometers an hour. Oh dear, boys and girls, this thing is slow, as we're going to be seeing in the gameplay in just a second. One thing that does suck about these British tank destroyers as well is that the Turtle, the AT-15 and the Tortoise are all limited to 10 kilometers an hour backwards while the Badger is limited to 12. And this is a huge advantage of the TS-5 compared to the Turtle. The fact that the TS-5 can go at 26 kilometers an hour forwards and 12 backwards. That 6 kilometers an hour difference is gigantic when you're limited to 20 like you are in the Turtle. It makes the TS-5 feel positively nippy compared to the brand new super heavy British Tier 8 premium tank destroyer. That is a mouthful to keep repeating, huh? All right, so let's talk about the traverse speed of this vehicle. It's 24 degrees a second, just a bit worse than the TS-5, but a little bit better than all of the other British vehicles in this comparison. Finally, concealment. It's actually a little bit smaller than the AT-15 as you don't have the Coppola, and it's massively better with regards to concealment than the Tortoise is. It's comparable to the Badger actually, but not quite as good as the TS-5. And so that does make the Turtle just a little bit more sneaky than the Tortoise or the AT-15, and I would probably recommend actually trying to get concealment on this tank, of course, after you have 100% repairs, because that is a must on a vehicle like this. A final passing mention should be made to the 370 meters view range that this vehicle has, which means that unless you're going to take coated optics on this tank, you're really not going to be spotting your opponents at very long distances. But taking coated optics on a vehicle that is purely focused on just engaging whatever's, whatever's in front of it, what nearly just karate chopped a glass to the side of my microphone there, we're just going to go through with it anyway. So yeah, unless you're, you're planning on engaging at long ranges and playing this tank in a sniping role, I think it will probably do better by taking a toolkit or even taking a, a super heavy spore liner. But I can I'm totally, not the super heavy, because it can't use a super heavy, a heavy spore liner. But I can also understand the players who might like to use coated optics on this tank or even binoculars. Just try and set it up and try and play at long range where hopefully the weaker points of its armor are less accessible to uh, your opponent. But anyway, you know what? I think that's quite enough jibber jabber. Well, let's give you all a double helping of gameplay in the turtle. So here we go, we are playing on Tundra for our first round in the Turtle. And of course, where am I going to take the Turtle on Tundra? Well, it's pretty obvious. I'm going to go west. I'm going to go west. I'm going to go and try and turn it into a nice linear fight because I believe that's where the Turtle is going to be at its best on this map. If I can manage to make my way over here, that's just the optimum scenario for the Turtle to be able to crush through and keep its opponents right in front of it. Alternatively, it can be a little bit awkward to uh, when your opponents try and get up behind you and try and flank you, but I'm hoping that we can crush our way through here, that we make our way towards the enemy base, and I'm not too interested in going and fighting it out on towards the hill, because I think the faster tanks are going to go up there and they could track me and lock me down. All right, well, I've got lots of time to be able to talk about map tactics at the start of this replay. And that's because, as you can see, the turtle is limited to 20 kilometers an hour, ladies and gents. This is a slow tank. The VK 101P right alongside me is pretty much my speed brother right now. I'm not doing myself any favors at the moment because apparently I got a log just completely stuck in my tracks. Okay, well, that, that's going to help. Okay, it disappeared. Fantastic. I guess it faded into another dimension. Well, oh, no, what's this? Okay, I'm getting really distracted by logs. You can see when you're driving around these super slow tanks and you don't really have too much to be able to talk about, um, yeah, you, you kind of get distracted by things, right? 
Anyway, I'm, one thing I'm not going to get distracted about anymore is that after driving for a minute and a half, it's time to fight! So we bounce our first standard round there off the KV-4. A little bit awkward, but what are you going to do? But here we go. It's a turtle. It's right in front of us. I'm not going to fire willy-nilly at this turtle. But he's actually doing a really good job. Do you see how he's hiding his lower plate and he's actually got on that ridge line? I have to go and dominate this position. If I sit at the back and I allow that turtle to sit there, he's going to win. I don't want that to happen. So that KV-4 on the enemy team actually fires high explosive rounds. And now it's time to really take it to the enemy. All right, here we go. How easy is it to hit that Coppola? One, right into the Coppola of the turtle. Let's see if I can get a little bit of height, use the gun depression, stick my tank over this ridge. We managed to bounce a premium round from the turtle. We bounce a premium round from the KV-4. We put a standard round into the weak point of the VK-101P. And we're making our tank a little bit of a tricky shot for the turtle to be able to engage us. We bounce the second shot off the Coppola, showing you it's not the easiest thing in the world to hit. But we put our third one right into the top of the tank. 332 damage dealt there. And we are ripping apart this turtle's health. Another standard round into the top of the tank. We bounce his premium rounds, showing you that the better player is probably going to win these super heavy engagements even if i do joke all the time about these being low skill cap tanks they they are low skill cap tanks because you can't really use the mobility of the vehicle but they do have other strengths obviously the combat itself that pixel perfect placement and the fact that you can't make any mistakes otherwise they're heavily punished is definitely one of the things that you have to do well in your super heavy tanks but on the other hand, you, you can't really use the mobility. But then again, I guess there's always forward planning and making sure you're thinking about where you need to go and getting there before you need to be there. Because when you're a super slow tank, of course, that's probably one of the most important things you could possibly do in the game. All right, so we just smashed our way down this flank. We vanquished three tanks, one after another, a turtle, a KV-4 and a VK-101. We bounced 1,600 damage. A lot of that, as we can see, were premium rounds that have about 260, 270 millimeters of penetration. Actually, I think the KV-4 is more like 280, isn't it? And the premium rounds on this tank, 253. So yeah, good stuff. But those are all right in the sweet spot of where you can actually bounce in the turtle. Remember what I said about this top bar? As soon as they have about 280 millimeters of pen, they're going to be a 50-50 to go through. And if they've got 300 plus, they're pretty much going to go through every single time. Even if you're using your gun depression on this tank, you're going to struggle. So next up, we need to be able to get back. And I just decide, well, it's going to take me longer to get around the building than it is to be able to shoot through the building. So I'm hoping the KV-4 will join in along with me, but he doesn't. I can't stop. This 20 kilometers an hour, we've literally been driving the whole time this game, or we've been fighting the whole time this game. We need to get back to see if we can protect our cap circle, or whether we can at least go down kicking and screaming. Now, our VK-101 and our turtle is pushing on. Hopefully, they're going to be able to handle a turtle in an AMX AC-48 inside the base, or at least they're going to distract the enemy's artillery long enough for me and this AMX to be able to hold back three, four, possibly five tanks on the enemy team. All right, so... This is a tricky scenario. You know you've got a T-44 coming up on your left. Can you manage to depress the gun to be able to engage tanks right in front of you? Just hoping that I can hit the top of the T-69. Can't quite find him. Instead, I've got a clean shot there into the side of the UDES. And I'm thinking, where's the T-44? There's the T-44. Immediately, he tracks. I'm going to repair the tracks. I'm going to heal my radio operator. And then now this is a pressure shot right into the tracks of the T-44. I'm thinking about pushing forwards to be aggressive. He chokes a shot. I'm going to put another one in. And I'm thinking, is he going to be able to get my side? Please help me, AMX. I request fire. I'm hoping the AMX can help. And I'm thinking, what's my best chance? Shall I go and engage the T-44? Or shall I kill the UDES and hopefully stop the UDES from getting the AMX? But unfortunately, it was the T-44 who got him. I poke up over the ridge, I clutch one into the top of the T-44, but now we're just losing hit points left, right and center to the T-44 over on the other flank. He's using uh, a premium rounds inside an 85 millimeter gun, I guess there. You can't really blame him for doing that. I'm gonna put one into the IS-3 and then artillery is going to shut us down. And that's pretty much turtle gameplay. This is the perfect example. I really wanted to pick this game, not because we won the battle. I wanted to pick this game because I showed you the weak points of the turtle on top. I showed you how great this vehicle can be in a close quarters combat, but how frustrating it can be to have to drive around at 20 kilometers an hour and just frankly just go down swinging but still not really feel like you've got any opportunity to make incredibly clutch plays to be able to to handle the battle. The artillery is going to massively punish you. Tanks that flank you are going to massively punish you. You can't be aiming everywhere all at once and the lack of the turret means that you can't be driving in one direction while shooting in the other, which is definitely something that a lot of us can take for granted. 
So round two, we're playing on steps, and this time, once again, we're in an all tier eight matchup. Now, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest about how this vehicle deals with its higher tier opponents. If they fire gold, they pen you. It's really that simple. I don't think that there's, I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying to, to not show you tier 10 gameplay. It's just because, what is there to say? I've showed you in the armor review that if a leopard prototype fires premium rounds at you, they're going to be able to go through this bar on top of your tank because it's very flat, even if you're using your gun depression every single time. And if you're not using your gun depression, they're going to go through you every single time with 330 millimeters of penetration. So if you're a tier 9 or a tier 10 tank and you see one of these on the battlefield, you should be looking at them like some almighty tasty snack. So what that means is that the turtle can only truly perform against tier 8 and below vehicles if it wants to be this super heavy that holds back an entire flank. Apart from that, you're really kind of just a damage support, but you can be an excellent damage support at that. 3000 base DPM when you have this thing fully tricked out with brothers in arms, with a premium consumable, with, with vents on side the vehicle and even a gun rammer, we're starting to, to push towards the 4k damage per minute mark. Truly is monstrous with regards to that. But as I showed you in the statistics, it's not truly monstrously higher, it's pretty much the same, although a little bit higher than the TS5 for example. And so I will be talking in this replay quite a lot about the differences between those two tanks and how I feel about the vehicles. So I've managed to get the, the turtle into a beautiful scenario here. I'm exposing only the top of my tank and I'm actually sweating it. Do you know why I'm sweating it? I'm sweating it because not only because of the artillery on the enemy team, I'm sweating it because do you see what's going on on the other flank? We have got pretty much the entirety of the enemy team, well at least it feels like it, against us here. We've got eight tanks that have been spotted and there's a few more tanks that are not. We've got over half of the enemy team and yet we definitely don't have half of our team defending. We've got a few tank destroyers that are sitting in locations like this, whether they're actually going to be effective from there is another question. So we're going to have our work cut out for us here if we want to try and deal with our opponents. Okay, so it's all about being the hold the line, right? That's what the tactic we're going to have here. And the turtle on a ridge line like this, this is what I want to show you that this tank can actually be tremendous for doing exactly that. So, keep in mind of the rounds that hit the vehicle and the rounds that penetrate the vehicle and the rounds that don't pen the vehicle. Artillery, bad. LT-432 firing standard rounds that we're going to try and blind fire back at him. We're going to see how many we're going to be able to ricochet from this LT-432. There's a couple of rounds there. I'm trying to use the, the markers by trying to align up inside the, the sniper mode. This little indicator in the middle of your screen with the indicator of the direction that the shell is coming from to see if we can snipe back. We'll have to take a look in the post-game stats to see if we hit that LT-432 at all or whether he appears later on the game on lower hit points. Now I don't want to just sit there because I think it's only a matter of time before the LT-432 gets bored and either he fires high explosive rounds at us or he fires premium rounds at us. And there we go. There's the first HE round from the LT-432. But I'll take, I'll take the 49 damage that I received and then I bounce the very next shell and I finish off the Centurion and I get a shot into the Pershing. And this is what can happen when the enemy team see that you're, they're losing the other flank and they feel that they've got a numerical advantage, they will start to push. And the turtle really can punish an aggressive advance. But I found it quite hard in the tank to actually be the aggressor because of the mobility, because of the, the fact that you can get double tracked, you get locked down. And I would also like to stress that the gun handling on this vehicle, it's definitely not like a tortoise. If any of you play the tortoise, you'll know just how quickly you can snap in your shots. You can't really do that in this tank. It doesn't have the worst gun handling, I'm not going to claim that. But the aim time on the gun, it's not incredible like it would be on, on a tortoise. And so if you absolutely love that vehicle and you're thinking, oh, the turtle's going to be just the same, but it's at tier 8. It's not exactly the case. Not exactly the case at all. All right, so the enemies are pushing at us. One by one. Well, actually not pushing one by one. They're kind of taking sensible locations and they're trying to hold them out. But if the Pershing gets locked down, I believe, by the artillery there, that's going to be a lovely easy shot for us. We managed to do a decent roll for 321, shutting down the Tier 8 American medium tank. Now I'm starting to sense there's some blood in the water against the enemy team here. All right, Turtle advancing. Looks like he's aiming for our lower plate there, but he actually misses it. And I fire one into the weak point of the enemy tank, and he gets annihilated by the Udes. I guess the enemy Turtle was a little bit overconfident confident there and some good marksmanship into the weak point of the vehicle combined with the 300 millimeters of pen that the Udes has behind us which will always be able to go through his tank was more than enough to be able to just dominate this location. So the enemies are making real bad mistakes here that they're not all pushing at the same time. 
The way to counter a vehicle like this is either to flank it or to simply all engage it at the same time. If they just sit in front of me like the enemy team are doing, then we're going to be able to pick them all apart one by one by one and then it's going to be all she wrote for the enemy team, as long as we can keep this going. So Lovers are bouncing off premium rounds. The Mutz is penning premium rounds from above though. And uh, I did check on battle hits after the, the gameplay, and those Mutz rounds are going into the lower plate. So don't think that's the premium rounds on the Mutz just going through the upper hull of this tank. And while they could do that sometimes out of 10, no, it's because he's getting clean shots into the lower plate that the guy's dealing with us. All right, so I've got bored of bouncing rounds off this lever, so instead I'm loading high explosive rounds here. The high explosive rounds on this tank, they're not exactly incredible, like on the Tortoise. I'm, I'm saying that a lot in this replay, and I, uh, hopefully you're trying to understand why. But 54 millimeters of pen and 430 alpha damage combined with a very decent rate of fire will be more than enough to be able to pick apart uh, at least some hit points off your heavy tanks. And that's significant, right? 142. It's definitely not as significant as the premium rounds the Lerva's firing into us. But to be able to do 142 and then 99 damage to the Lerva, I mean, uh, Wargaming, what's wrong with high explosive rounds the way they are? Like, why do we need the, the test server? Like, that Lerva, he put two rounds into us. He was sitting there hold down. I put 142, 99, 56 against the German's turret. Do we really need any high explosive changes? In my opinion, no. No, we don't. Please, please. I like the armor piercing. I love the APCR changes. Um, or, the, or the lack of changes to the premium rounds to make standard rounds just a little bit better. I love the health scaling, but high explosive rounds, no. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Back onto the turtle. Just take a good chunk of HE rounds in this tank. In fact, I ended up yesterday while I was play having my second play session in this tank, I took more high explosive rounds than I did for the first few times that I played this tank that you are seeing in the gameplay today. So if you take a, a few more HE rounds in this vehicle, I definitely think it'll be useful when you're in your hold down situations. Alright, so 2,800 damage and 3,300 tracking and assistance. Pretty solid stuff for a tier 8 premium tank. We are going to make some fat credits from this game. But this is another part of the game that I want to highlight and stress about this tank. Oh my lord, is this tank incredibly frustrating to play in a winning game. You have seen two fairly close battles. One which ended in a loss, one which is most likely going to end in a win here unless the enemy turtle and the LT-432 can pull off some absolute magic. But this part of the game, it's incredibly frustrating to play the turtle. You end up having to just drive and your opponents are fast enough to run away from you, your allies are fast enough to be able to chase your opponents down, and you often don't get to do anything. And you know what? It's got to the stage where I'm not even sure if even if I want to try and shoot this LT-432. So I'm going to just fire one round at him, and then, you know what? You know what I think the Quacky Baby's going to do? The Quacky Baby's going to decide, well, wow, this looks like a nice bit of lighting. Oh, let's align my gun up straight. Let's turn my tank. That looks like a pretty good thumbnail. I'm, I'm basically being a sundial right now, huh? And there you go. Ladies and gents, those are my two turtle rounds. That's a stylish finish if ever I've seen one. And this was pretty much the classic turtle game. Get in position, use your armor, use your DPM, use your marksmanship as well. Don't just dab the two key. Why not actually try and aim at your opponents as well? And if you do that and you're not just slathering out the gold rounds left, right and center, unlike what the enemy team seemed to do, at least towards the latter part of this replay, yeah, as you're going to see in the post-game stats, you do get some fat rewards. So our first game on Tundra was a high caliber for the 3,800 damage we dealt. No assistance that worth mentioning this game, but that was still 103,000 credits profit for our defeat because of the courageous resistance we got, because I don't think I fired that many of any premium rounds inside the battle. Next up on steps, this was a cool-headed medal, a Spartan medal, and a Steel War medal. This was 1,447 base. That would always be an ace. While this one, maybe this was due to the fact that I was playing the tank on the release day, this will pretty much always be an ace tanker, irrelevant of what vehicle you're playing, apart from maybe something like an Object 279E. And that gives us 98,000 credits profit. As once again, I can't remember firing many, if any, premium rounds inside this battle. And when you combine that with six thousand damage and detecting yeah you know you're going to be rocking and rolling so i blocked 3790 damage in the second battle in the previous one 2000 again enough to kill the vehicle multiple times over but still the turtle from these two replays it looks awesome right but there's just so many things that i really don't like about this tank uh, that kind of just make it balanced and that's probably a good thing right there should be some things to to not like about the vehicle 
The fact that that top bar is weak against your tier 10 and tier 9 tanks that fire gold. I mean, the tank is amazing against people who aren't willing to, to load it, but it's just awful against people who are. The lower plate is fine, it's balanced. It's, it's definitely not like a tortoise, however. With a tortoise, you can come round the corner aggressively. If they shoot your lower plate, ha! That's one of the strongest parts of your armor. They might as well aim at the weak point on top, it'll be far easier for them. And then the tortoise has this incredible damage per minute to really be able to rip people apart, as well as the increased accuracy and aim time. And it just feels right. It's got special hash, it's got better penetration on its standard and its premium rounds. I would far rather play a tortoise at tier 9, even though it's not a premium tank, than play the turtle at tier 8. The turtle, with its lack of penetration, not quite amazing aim time, no mobility advantage, it's weak lower plate, it's not very good side armor, and just not really that much better damage per minute than the TS-5 for example, it'd be hard to recommend this tank. Uh, it would be hard to recommend this vehicle unless you absolutely, utterly think that this is your playstyle and you want to play your British super heavy tank destroyers because that's your jam. You love your tortoise or you love your badger. You can't wait to have a vehicle like that so you can train your crews. For everybody else, I honestly think the TS-5 is better. The TS-5 has this lower plate that just magically bounces shells, unlike the turtles. And sure, while it doesn't have five degrees of, well, an extra five degrees of gun depression to ten like the turtle has, the fact that it's got these premium rounds of godlike proportions as well as better penetration on its standard rounds and even higher alpha damage too without its damage per minute being that much lower with actually better gun handling although it does have worse accuracy but why are you engaging at long range with the TS-5 anyway? I just think that the TS-5 is the more powerful TD. And that's from coming from someone who loves the tortoise. I love the tortoise at tier 9. And while the T95 is fun, just it, it doesn't really feel as if it doesn't really feel as if it has that magic for me that the, the tortoise has. And so I thought that with the turtle, this was going to be my dream tier 8 premium tank destroyer. Just hasn't quite become like that. I, I don't really feel a connection to the tank all of that much for the variety of reasons that I've discussed. One thing I must mention, however, is that well done to Wargaming for introducing a vehicle that has a novel playstyle. It's the first tier 8 British premium tank destroyer in the game. And while it's definitely good, I really don't think that it's just flat out broken. It's dubious about the, the top armor on this tank, however. The fact that it's just so useless against gold rounds, but it's so good against everything else. This, this tank really, a lot like the mouse, just highlights the problem with World of Tanks. That, that gold rounds will just always pen, while standard rounds will never pen. Therefore, unless you load the gold, it's not optional. Uh, apart from, obviously, the weak point on top of the tank, but if the vehicle's using its 10 degrees of gun depression, it doesn't have a weak point. But I guess that's okay. You know, I think it's okay for a tank to not have a weak point if it's managed to get itself in a, on a ridgeline like that, because there's so many other things about the tank that are not exactly the best. I think it would be okay for that to happen. But if you're anything like me and you just get absolutely frustrated about being put into a situation or put into a, a tank which is so matchup dependent and there's going to be high tier TDs on the enemy team that are just going to look on this absolute flat plate along here as if it's the easiest thing to pen in the world. Yeah, I think this tank's going to frustrate you probably just as much as it frustrated me. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hopefully this tank review was interesting. Maybe the gameplay was fun or maybe it was just useful for you. If it was, give the video a thumbs up. But if you absolutely hated it, give the video a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the turtle in the comments down below. Do you think that it looks like an absolutely incredible tank and you can't wait to pick one up? Or do you think that the TS-5 looks better? And considering you could get the TS-5 a hell of a lot cheaper if you took part in Wargaming's Mission Marathon or even like I did for free. Although I did put, uh, I did have to trade a lot of the hours of my life into the game to be able to get it for free. Uh, well, what's the point of this tank, right? And as always, thank you so much for watching. It's Friday, so have a lovely weekend. And hopefully I'll see you soon.